volts minus 13.6 electron volt. You have to find out kinetic energy of an electron third excited state first do the first part send me the answers of first part then i'll discuss it with you Yes, someone has answered uh, Ahmed. Hmm, correct. First part is right, Ahmed. Meanwhile, you try the second part. Let me discuss the first part with the rest of you. See, ground state energy of hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 electron volt. Even if it is given or not, we already remember this value, right? Minus 13.6 electron volt. Kinetic energy of electron in second excited state. So we know the total energy in second excited state. But before we start and proceed with the discussion, tell me what is N in the first part, except Ahmed. Second excited state means what? One. Second excited state. See, uh, one is known as ground state. When you go N as two, that becomes one more higher. Third excited, like this. So your first excited, N is equal to one. This is ground state. 
then you write n is equal to 2. This becomes your first excited state. Then you write n is equal to 3. This becomes your second excited state. So whenever you have excited state, just subtract 1. Because ground state is n is equal to 1. First excited state, n at 2. Second excited state, n at 3. Third excited state, n at 4. Like this. So this one is n is equal to 3. I hope you understand this. Just remember it in this way. So it's better whatever is given. Do not subtract it. One. Just add one more term. That will give you the value. Like if you write one, that will become the previous. Right? So add one. Like third. So n is equal to 3 will give you second excited state. Because of ground state, we have to reduce one. So energy third, you can calculate in this way also. Minus 13.6 n square. That will be minus 13.63 square. But I have told you all to remember this value by yourselves at least till 5. Because in such questions, no, this is also a PYQ only. This is from 2006. This question was from 2006. That's why I'm saying such questions are there. So E3 is minus 13.6 by 9. That is minus 1.51 electron volt. So this is the total energy class. Now. Total energy, you can directly use it. You can show it in this way, but try to remember the final answer by yourself. And see here, what is asked? Kinetic energy. Total energy is this. Kinetic energy is asked. What did we discuss? Kinetic energy is negative of total energy. That makes it minus, minus of 1.51. That gives positive 1.51 electron volt. Same way, it is asking potential energy of electron in third excited state. Now, can you all answer what will be n in third excited state? n for third excited state. Sakina, can you try now? Yes, ma'am. So, third excited state will be n will be? N3. N3, see, uh, two, two. N2 is first excited state. Third excited state should be? Four. four. Just increase it by one. Increase the number by one. Third excited state, this will be four. Fine, ground state was one. Two first, three second. Four third like this. Whatever orbit you have, decrease one for the excited states. And then you want to find the number of orbit, increase the excited state by one. So if it was third excited state, you will write it as n as four. So now E4. E4 directly we remember the value minus 0 0.85. So it's better if you show it like this minus 13.6 by 4 square, which is minus 13.6 by 16. This is equal to minus 0 0.85 electron volt. All right. Now you have to find out potential energy. See, potential energy, potential energy is twice that of total energy. So just double it, 2 into minus 0 0.85. That will become? One point seven minus one point seven electron volt. We have the answer. Third part says if electron jumps to the ground state from third excited state. Class, what is ground state? It is n as one. Third excited state. This is n four. So electron is jumping from the fourth excited state to one. It means these are the levels from the nucleus. So electron is jumping from the fourth to the first one like this. You have to find out the wavelength. So how to calculate the wavelength? Just find out the change in energy, energy difference for the fourth part. For the fourth part, just put in the energy difference that is coming. See. What will be the energy difference if it is jumping from fourth to one? Final energy minus initial energy. So if E4 is minus 0 0.85. And what is E1? 
minus 13.6. So just subtract both of these. This will become 12.75, but in electron volt, 12.75 electron volt. So you have energy with you. This whole energy is equal to Hc by lambda. Delta E is equal to Hc by lambda. So lambda will be Hc by delta E. So lambda will be 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 34. Speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8. This energy is 12.75. Now I convert electron volt. So that will be uh, 1.6. 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90. This much, whatever answer you will get in terms of meter, angstrom, Fermi meter, any unit you can answer. So note it down. So in such questions, no, where kinetic energy, total energy, these are given. You do not have to perform any calculations. So I think question all of you have noted. Try with the solution, write the solution. If anyone wants to see the question, please let me know.
those who have written the above solution and have found the value of this wavelength. Uh, firstly, those who have got the value of wavelength, please tell me. And uh, it's, I think it's better if you answer this in angstrom, you'll get a direct answer. And meanwhile, others try the fourth part, value of principal quantum number and the total energy of atom in the excited state. So this also came in 2013. So this question is very easy. Fourth part, first one, it's just that you have to take out the ratios. Once you have the ratios, you can get the total energy. At least try to find out the ratio. You'll get the principal quantum number.
So till now only Samaira has attempted to try the question. At least principal quantum number try to answer this class. Yes, Sakina. So Sakina and Ahmed have answered the correct answered correctly. I think just slight mistake has been done by you, Samira. I'll tell you one thing. See, in ground state of hydrogen atom, Bohr's radius is given as 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11. In one excited state, it is given that it becomes 21.2 10 into 10 to the power minus 11. Right. So radius is proportional to n square. So take the ratio of the radii. What are the radii given? First radius is 5.3 into 10 to the power 11. 
this is equal to this is n1 square right and this is 21.2 into 10 to the power minus 11 by n2 so this this can get cancelled n1 by n2 whole square is equal to 4 samaira their whole square is equal to 4 so when you take the root n1 by n2 becomes 2 and n2 is 1. So you get, because this is written ground state, so n2 is 1. So that means n2, that becomes twice of n1. Right. Or I think I'll reverse it because this I have 5.3 I've written first. No, So I'll write it as n2 by n1. Five point three. I have written it first. Let me reverse this because this will give answers in decimal. So it's better if we reciprocally write it. I'm writing hydrogen for this is hydrogen five point three and nth one is twenty one point two. So I'm writing this first. You'll by both the methods you'll get the same answer. It's just that to explain it, it will be better if I write this as n two. So this is 21.2 into 10 to the power minus 11 by n1. This is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11. This is whole square. This part will give you 4. So n2 by n1 will be 4. So n1, we know this is ground state. So n2 will be twice of n1. That is 2. So n2 this becomes 2 and you know n1 this is 1 now this is asking you total energy in this excited state so which excited state is this, this is the first excited state and in first excited state that is in the second energy level we know energy is minus 13.6 by n square which is uh, yes emit but with a negative sign also Negative sign will also come. No? So this is minus 13.6 by 2 square or you write it as minus 13.6 by 4. So this is directly minus 3.4 electron. This is how you had to solve it. I think one more question is there. Note down the solution. Then we'll practice that. Then we'll move on to nuclei.
the class, this concept, no, this comes calculate the shortest wavelength or the longest wavelength in, like this. So shortest wavelength is the Balmer series of hydrogen atom. Whenever you have to calculate which region you have to, you also have to mention the region. See, if you know the wavelength, if you know the wavelength, then regarding seeing the wavelength, you can already tell the region. And even without the calculation, by just looking at the term, Balmer series, this you can answer. We had listed no loads of regions for Lyman separate, for Bastion separate, for Balmer separate, for fund separate, for bracket separate. So for Balmer series, you do not have to remember or cal perform calculation by just your memory. You just have to mention it lies in ultraviolet region. But for the first part, see, whenever it says shortest wavelength, one of the wavelengths remain fixed and one of the orbits remain fixed. First orbit where the electron will jump if the electron jumps from any of the states to ground state, if electron jumps from any of the state to ground state, we call this as Lyman series. If electron jumps from any of the state to second, we call this as Balmer series. So it means this is fixed. Two writing N as two is fixed. What about the other one from where this is N2? from where the electron has to the where the electron has jumped what about the initial part what about the initial part so that is not given it should have given no fifth fifth orbit or sixth orbit then you would have written this use red box formula obtain the wavelength it has just mentioned shortest wavelength whenever it will mention you shortest wavelength means the first one this becomes infinity all right, so one by wavelength, this becomes Redberg's constant. One by n two square minus one by n one n one square. So one by lambda Redberg's constant. I write it as r only right now. Later on, you can multiply. So this becomes one by two square minus one by infinity square. One by lambda is r. So this becomes one by four minus one by zero. So wavelength will become four by R, right? Four by R. So it becomes four by divided by 10 to the power seven. Redworks constants value C class. You can either write it properly 1.1 into 10 to the power seven meter inverse. But since 1.1 is a very small number, we usually write it as 10 to the power seven. So wavelength becomes four into 10 to the power minus seven meters which you can write it as 4,000 angstrom also. Approximately around 4,000 angstrom. Answer will be around 360, something like this. Calculate precisely in exam. And this lies in ultraviolet region. Okay, note it down, class. So for this was important from this question. It has come in one CBAC 2015, once in 16.
Okay, class. So I think atoms, most of the question, rest of the questions we had completed in the class itself only. Energy level diagram. Did we do or not? Energy level diagram. Based on this. Some questions we did. Some questions are left from nuclei. Uh, let's complete nuclei as well. Uh, take a five minutes break. After five minutes break, any doubts you have from atoms? Any point you are having difficulty? Any questions from the last class or today's class? You're having any issues? Get it clarified in the meantime. I'm here only. Take a five minutes break. Freshen up your cells. Then we'll start with nuclei.
Fine class, so I think this much break is sufficient. Let us start with nuclei. Now class, from the theory point, protons and so those who have not yet even attended the class of nuclei, be attentive right now. You will be able to grasp everything. Protons and neutrons are collectively called as nucleons. And number of protons, this is known as atomic number. So when we were doing questions uh, yesterday also from dual nature, we had seen atomic number of gold was 79. So how did we get it? So from the periodic table from your chemistry, you already know the atomic number. Same atomic number, same mass number you will use. Mass numbers of protons and mass number is basically the number of protons and neutrons that is held together. And this entire, these are called as nucleons. So mass number is basically number of nucleons. Number of protons are the atomic number. So we represent atomic number by Z. We represent mass number by A. Number of protons is Z. Number of electrons will also be Z. Unless and until some additional electron has been added or deleted. Like for, um, if I say aluminum ion. ion. Aluminum atom, it is Al. Same number of electrons, same number of protons. But as soon as I write three plus here, that means three electrons have gone creating plus three charge. We have seen this in semiconductors also. Right. So that is different. But for a neutrally aligned atom, you have number of protons equal to number of electrons represented by the atomic number, which is Z. Number of nucleons we represented by A, the mass number. Now, if you add number of protons plus number of neutrons, you'll get the mass number. So number of neutrons will be what? A minus Z. Right, this will be A minus Z, mass number minus atomic number. Now, see, this is how we represent a chemical symbol. Why do we do, do this? Because in the upcoming questions also, you will see an element will be written with the values. With the rest of the values, the element will be written, whatever element is given. With the atomic number as, and the mass number, it will be given. Like, let's talk about iron. If you talk about iron, so here 56, that is the mass number will be written. And in periodic table, you must remember this is 26, right? Iron, you have no iron, cobalt, nickel. So this lies 26. Then you have isotopes. What are isotopes? Isotopes are element that have same value of Z, means this part is same. This is different. Like if we talk about the isotopes of hydrogen atom, protium, deuterium, tritium, here one remains same, the atomic number remains same because element is same, element is same. So you have one as the atomic number, but mass number is different. You have one for protium, two for deuterium, three for tritium. So same Z, different A, same atomic number, different mass number, that makes your isotope. And class, sometimes students get confused between this Z and A as in what represents what. Because atomic number starts with A, but we represent it by Z. So keep this in mind. This is opposite. We do not write A for atomic number, right? Because if you remember it oppositely, in your calculation somewhere or the other, you can get stuck. So Z is atomic number, M is mass number, A is mass number. Then isobars are such element opposite. They have the same value of atomic number, uh, same value of the mass number, but atomic number differs. Here you can see atomic number is different. Atomic number is different, but mass number is same for both of it. Approximately, if you take chlorine 37, chlorine 35 also exists, but we are talking about chlorine 37. Or best example is calcium. I think the best example is calcium and argon. One is 18, right? Argon lies in the last group. 18 and calcium here somewhere in the second element, alkali metals. So you have 20 over here. But when you take their masses, that becomes 40 for both. So such elements are called isobars. Then you have elements where number of neutrons is same. It means the difference between this will be exactly equal to difference between this. A minus Z in both will be same because that A minus Z will give you number of neutrons. 
So isotones will have same number of neutrons. 37 minus 17, which is 20. 39 minus 19, that is 20. Same value of atomic number, same value of mass number, but different energy states. Now, class, this you should remember by yourself. Mass of electron, mass of proton, mass of neutron. Some In some questions, these data is not provided. These data are not provided to you in some of the questions. So it's better if wherever there is, there is no mention of such values, you remember it by yourself. So mass of electron is 0 0.0055 AMU. Mass of a proton is 1.0073 AMU. Mass of neutron is 1.0086 AMU. Then this part is important. These two upcoming parts, the nuclear density and nuclear size, these two parts are very important because class C, very, very small portion of nuclei is left from the entire lesson. You had radioactivity from which half life, full life, these were very important. But all these have been deleted, alpha decay, beta decay, these are not given. So you have such a small portion, so it means every point of it becomes important. And the first topic that comes is nuclear size and nuclear density. So there are a lot of chances this can be asked or mass defect will be asked. Because only these topics are left now. So nuclear size from here, you can simply get this relation R is equal to R naught A to the power one by three. This derivation can be asked. R is equal to R naught A to the power one by three, where R is the radius of the nucleus, A is the mass number, and R naught is the constant that is 1.24 millimeters. If different, different values of R naught is given, then you can put different values of R naught. But if nothing is specified, directly use 1.24 p meters. Regarding nuclear density, nuclear density is fixed for any element that is 2.3 into 10 to the power 17 kg per meter cube. This remains fixed. You are talking about germanium, you're talking about iron, you're talking about argon, you're talking about calcium, you're talking about potassium, you're talking about sodium for every element. This remains fixed. Why? Because this is nucleus density, which does not involve mass number. No mass number is involved. No atomic number is involved. So it does not differ it. The difference could have arisen because of the mass number. Different different mass numbers would have led to the different values of the nuclear density. But such is not the case over here. So nuclear density remains independent of the masses. This value remains fixed. And it also comes to show you to prove that nuclear density is independent of mass number. So how will you show? You will show the entire calculation till the last step. And all of you, please remember this value. Do not waste your time in the exam calculating this value. This is like the values of the constants you remember, one of the constants. Uh, these four questions, we did it. Now, yes, mass defect. C class, mass defect is easy to remember. It's just that few terms you have to remember here. Mass of proton is MP. Z number of protons exist. So total mass of proton becomes ZMP, right? One mass, one protonic mass is MP. So two protonic mass will be two MP. Three protonic mass will be three MP. Z protonic mass will be ZMP. So this is the total mass of protons. Now, mass of neutrons is MN. How many neutrons are there? How do we calculate the number of neutrons? A minus Z. So mass of one neutron, MN. Mass of two neutron, 2mn. Mass of A minus Z means whatever total number of neutrons is present. That is A minus Z into mn. This gives you total number of nucleons. Add this up. You have the number of nucleons with you. That is Zmp plus A minus Zmn. And subtract is from the mass of the entire nucleus. You get the mass defect. Whatever defect has been created while constructing the nucleus, what should have been the original mass of nucleus, and what is currently the mass of nucleus. That difference gives you the mass defect. And from this, we calculate a quantity which we call as the binding energy. Binding energy, whatever mass defect you have obtained, multiply it by C square, that is square of the speed of light. 
Then when, so it means the entire thing you will multiply ZMP plus A minus ZMN minus seven into whole C square. If you are asked to write about binding energy per nucleon, then divided by the mass number. Same thing, same procedure divided by the mass number. Now an alternate to ca in calculation of speed of light, squaring speed of light and calculating it. One of the alternations over here is to multiply it by 931 mega electron. So you'll get your answer in terms of mega electron. This eases our calculation. This is in terms of mega electron. Then binding kind of energy curve is there. This is not very important. I have told you also, go through the notes, have a look at it once. Uh, let's start with some of the questions. Uh, yes, this can be, uh, this is more part of chemistry, but this has come. That's why I want to discuss it with you guys. Natural chlorine is found to be a mixture of two isotopes of masses 34.98 AMU and 36.98 AMU. Right, 34.98, 36.98. Their relative abundances are 75.4 and 25.6 percent. Percentages are given, you have to find out composite atomic mass of natural chlorine. Whenever such a question is asked to calculate the composite mass, the mass which we use, we use not for chlorine, we write 35. 35, we all we write almost 35 whenever we are solving any questions in chemistry or somewhere. We write it as 35. How did we get it? Multiply the relative abundance by the actual mass, isotopic mass. So multiply 34.98 by 75.4. Add next 36.98 by 24.6. Some other data would have been there. We would have added, multiplied and added that also. Then divided by 100. So once you solve this, automatically here you will get the answer as 35.47 AM. Note it down. The next question, you have to try it by yourself.
answer the second part those who will write the first question with the answer here the calculation will become very easy because 10 milligram is given Uh, yes, Mariam, answer is right. Samaira, uh, one digit error, Samaira. It's almost correct, see. But uh, here we'll use E is equal to mc square direct relation. Mass is given as 10 into 10 to the power minus 3. This is grams. Into 10 to the power minus 3, kgs. So milligrams we have converted into kgs. And 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole square. So that makes it 9 into. See, from here we have 16, 10 to the power 16. From here we have minus 6. And we are here we have plus 1. So that becomes 10 plus 1, that is 11. So 10 to the power 11, this much juice. Same way, same method, you have this one question. I think you should be able to answer this now. 2001, CBSE 2001 question. Others also try, those who haven't answered.
Tamam den. Share the answer if you have got the answer. class how you calculate the energy equivalent over here hmm. c class mass of one atom of carbon the mass of one atom of carbon 12 this is 12 amu mass of one atom of carbon 12 is 12 amu so we convert amu atomic mass unit into kgs so you multiply it by the protonic mass basically 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg you've obtained the mass once you have obtained the mass you will calculate the energy so energy will be mc square so 12 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole square. And let's do one thing. We'll divide it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 here only because we have to get the answer in mega electron volt. So this becomes very easy to calculate class. You can look here. See 1.2, 1.6, 1 1.6 will get cancelled. 9 into 12. So exact answer of this will come out to be 11,205 mega electron volt.
note it down, then try this fourth question. Fourth question is the most important question of all the questions that have come.
Okay, so first part, Mariam and Ahmed have answered already. Others also, hurry up. First part, at least you can answer. We have just discussed it. Uh, not uh, ratio, not ratio, Mariam. Uh, Rehan right. See, yes, they are isotopes because their atomic number is same. Look, class. X and Y, these are random elements. We don't know what are they. 7, 3. Y is 4, 3. This is same. Didn't we do this? This is 4. This is same atomic number. I told you, you now, same Z. Different A. This makes an isotope. Which one is more stable? Why see? Take out the number of neutrons. For X, you, it will be 7 minus 3. This will give you 4. For Y, this will be 4 minus 3. That will give you 1. Now see. Since here, what is happening? X will be more stable because this has more number of neutrons. More number of neutrons in X. So stability will be more. This is how you will be figuring it out. Note it down, class.
Yes, class, answer for this question. See, class, I'll tell you how to solve this. This is a very important question. It has come once in 2003, then 2010, and 2017 also, and also once it was there in CBSE sample paper. See, very, very easy method is it. We'll study a very easy method to simplify this question using very small tricks in stepwise. Heavy nucleus X, mass number of X is given, binding energy per nucleon of X is given. This splits up into Y and Z, which are equal fragments having masses and mass numbers as 110 and 130, and binding energy per nucleon of each is 8.5 mega electron volt, right? You have to find out the total binding energies of individual. So one single energy, binding energy per nucleon, binding energy per nucleon means divided by mass number. This is some value. So what would be just the total binding energy? Multiply it here. Multiply whatever value you have with it, then only you will get the binding energy, no? So that's how you will calculate x, y, z individually. Like let's talk about nucleus x. For nucleus x, you have atomic, you have mass number as 240, binding energy per nucleon is given as, uh, how much it was given? 7.6, no? 7.6 mega electron volt. So only binding energy will be simply multiply both of these 240 into 7.6 mega electron volt. So that will result in 1824 mega electron volt. Coming to Y. For nucleus Y. Mass number A1 is 110. Energy is same. Binding energy per nucleon is same. 8.6. Sorry, 8.5. 8.5 mega electron volt. So here binding energy will be 110 multiplied by 8.5. So 0, then 5, then 5, then 12, then 1, then 3, 13, 3, 9, 9, 935 mega electron. This will be for nucleus Y. Last nucleus is left for nucleus Z. The mass number is 130. The binding energy per nucleon is same, 8.5 mega electron volt. So total binding energy will be 113 to 8.5. That will be zero. Then five. This becomes five, right? So eight and three, you have 24, 25, makes it 30, one zero will go up. And then you have one second, eight and five, one, 11, 1011 electron volt. So this is the total individual energies that was asked in the first half of the question. Calculate total binding energy of each of the nuclei. Then you have to find out energy released from fission. So energy release, how will you calculate? What are the new energies? Binding energy of Y plus Z. These are the new fragments. Right, subtract it from the original X. That is, uh, what was Y? Mm, 935, no, for Y. So 935 plus this is 1105 and subtract it from uh, 105. So this becomes uh, um, 4.2040 minus 1105. That becomes 
216. This will be, wait, wait, wait. One, this won't be 105. This is for Y, no? <laughs> See here. This is for Y. What is for X? Value of X. X is 1824. Okay, okay. See, if X is 1824. So this part will be 2040 minus 1824. That will be 6. Uh, you'll have 2 and then 1 left. As it is, you have 2. 216. Is it 6, 13, 1? Yes. 206, mega, 16 mega electron. This is how you solve. This is your finding the extra energy out here. And for individual energy, this is very easy. Binding energy per nucleon is given. You are asked to calculate binding energy. Whatever value is given, multiply it. All right. So note down it. Any difficulties, any queries you have, ask me.
All those who have completed, you may now leave. Now we'll continue next Saturday. First, we'll complete the entire second book. Then only we'll move on to the first book. All right, class. So thank you so much. Okay, keep on practicing. Any doubts you have, you can ask me. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.